Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. How can I trust my husband again? Advice. I found out on the evening before my one-year wedding anniversary that my spouse had been having a four-month-long emotional affair. His girlfriend reached out and was very candid with me. She had no idea I existed and was completely open about the scope and content of their relationship. My husband was the first person I ever fully trusted or loved, after years of abusive, unhealthy relationships and a very difficult childhood. I was completely flabbergasted to hear about this, let alone on our one-year wedding anniversary. I honestly thought it was a prank at first until the pictures and texts started coming. My big struggle right now is that I got deep in the weeds talking to his girlfriend, reading hours and hours of conversations. In these exchanges, he took credit for work I had done, said the house I bought was his, claimed I was abusive to him and a terrible role model to his kids, and dismissed every kind thing I had done for him during these four months, example, I took care of 100% of Christmas, buying gifts for his two young kids, doing Santa, plus buying gifts for him and my daughter, on Christmas he didn't have a single present for anyone to put under the tree, and he told his woman he had a disappointing holiday and was alone and received no gifts. I read all of these messages and feel really personally attacked and disrespected. He took the time to delete all references to me from his Reddit history. When she got suspicious, he told her lies about me and said that I was a terrible ex. He also said things to her that he said to me, example, I want to put a baby in you, I love you, we have the rest of our lives to spend together, that finger is missing a ring, and most devastatingly, he used the same little inside phrases with her that he did with me that used to make me feel special. I fully understand that I made the choice to ask this woman questions and read through hours of this content. I don't actually know what I was looking to accomplish. Part of me wanted to see how bad it got. Part of me wanted to try to guess whether he really felt these things. Part of me wanted to find some indicators that he was deceiving her. And I think that part of me wanted to feel this hurt as deeply as possible so I didn't make any excuses for him. My husband and I are spending the weekend apart at the suggestion of my therapist after I shut down and became emotionally numb. We had decided to have the kids per our normal schedule and I put on a happy face and pretended everything was fine. But when they left, I was physically incapable of crying or feeling anymore, so I sought out help. I'm here alone in my home missing my husband, but also going over all of this in my head. I looked back on texts from fights we had and pieced together how those days corresponded with how much he talked to this other woman those days. I looked at my camera roll and found days where I did things for him while he was not here, spending time video chatting with her in some parking lot. I've been searching the internet for things he posted and I'm finding snippets of some of the things about us he erased so he could convince this woman he was single. I feel like a mess. All this ranting aside, I have to ask, how can I trust him again? What can I do to take back all of the words and moments I saw he clearly shared with someone else? How can I start to believe him again? How do I rid myself of the doubts filling my head, example, he only wants to make this work because he doesn't have a place to go and wouldn't be able to spend time with his kids. How do I start to rebuild the former foundation of our relationship, which was trust, after it's been hit with a cannonball? I'm open to any feedback or suggestions, no matter how harsh. I've been trying to find ways I could have been more emotionally open to my husband so that he didn't feel like he had to confide in someone else. And as I'm rereading our old conversations I'm making note of times where he tried to reach out to me and for whatever reason it didn't stick. I know what I can work on to be a better partner in the future. I just don't know if this is something we can overcome or how to decide that. I want to be able to believe anything he says going forward without doubting it. I'm having a hard time even believing he loves me right now and I feel like I really need that. A letter to my husband who had an EA while we are taking a few days apart to process and reflect. 
reflections. I've been writing a lot in my journal about all of this. I'm very sad and have been having a very difficult time processing things. One thing I'm stuck on is the lies. I can't help but wonder if there was anyone else. I can't help but wonder what things you kept from me. I can't help but wonder what other ways you disrespected me. I wonder what else you're still hiding, but deleted, so I'll never know. I wonder if the romantic shit you spouted at the beginning was true or if it was just you trying to form some kind of emotional bond with someone to help you move past Karen or Anna or whomever. I wonder if every time you told me you loved me was a lie. I wonder if you have done this to other girls besides Jen and I. I wonder what things we've shared were based on a lie. I have been rereading our Facebook message history and learning some things about you. And me. And about how we interact. I see examples of you trying to open up emotionally, which lets me know you are capable. And I also see examples of where those things were brought up during traumatic conversations. And were thus lost in the back and forth. I went back and reread around the time of the second miscarriage. I was feeling neglected and sad and alone. When I told you that, you got very defensive and accusatory. You were hostile, and then wrote this beautiful message articulating that you had emotional needs in the moment that weren't being met. I reread that and felt so sad and terrible for not being there for you. I can see how much we were both hurting, individually. I can see how we both needed the same exact thing. I don't understand why, when I asked you for support, you were unable to give it. You supporting me would have allowed you to receive my support in return. We needed the same thing, I asked to be held and told it was going to be okay and in hindsight I believe that's exactly what you needed, too. You withheld love and support from both me and yourself. I'm not happy about how I handled things. I was clearly overwhelmed and shut down and hurting. I wound up processing things on my own and moving on. I'm disappointed that I didn't follow up with you. I'm embarrassed that for as much as I claim to be empathetic, I couldn't read that you were still in pain. This whole closing off and shutting down thing was what happened with our first miscarriage, so I assumed you just weren't capable of being there for me in those types of moments. What I didn't assume is that you never worked through anything. You moved on, but didn't deal with it. It's really easy to see when you stop caring. After the first miscarriage, things were different. You checked out, and came back for a brief time when I was pregnant again, and then fully checked out. I wonder when you decided to reach out to other people. I wonder if you gave up on me ever being a good partner and decided to go be vulnerable with someone else. I wonder if you sought out someone else to punish me for letting you down. I wonder if you thought I was being abusive the way you told Jen I was. I wonder if you ever connected with me at all and losing the baby made you lose interest. I wonder if your desire to have a baby and be married was just you wanting to feel better about a previous failed marriage. And if I ever meant anything to you at all. You very clearly wanted to have a baby with whoever would agree to it. I wonder if you regretted I was the one you randomly picked. I wonder if you're even capable of loving me. I wonder if you want a baby to feel better about yourself and not because it's actually something you can handle. I have so many unanswered questions. It's unfair you deleted everything. It's unfair that the only way we can move forward is for me to give you the benefit of the doubt and just jump in again, putting everything back on the line again after being so brutally torn apart. You've never put in that kind of effort with me. I didn't break your heart like this. I didn't assess your past and make the choice to betray you. You've done so much damage and taken so much from me. It's unfair that you lied so much and that someone else had to tell me. There are so many facets to how ducked up this all is. It's hard to pick a thought track. I fully acknowledge that your ducked up, selfish choices are not my fault. But that being said, I have been trying to reflect on the kind of partner I was. I can see times where I could have been more receptive to your emotions. I can see times where I got bent out of shape over nothing. I can also see times where I was made aware of my bad qualities and made an effort to improve things. Politics is the first example that comes to mind, but there are plenty of others, too. 
I think part of the reason I loved you so much is that you forced me to challenge my urge to give up and run. Your patience and willingness to not give up on me after a fight challenged me to improve who I was, and as a result, I was finally able to not run away and develop actual trust for someone. After all this time, my trust issues were actually runaway issues. I would bail on any relationship that got hard because I was afraid of rejection or disappointment. I definitely didn't articulate it to you, but being with you changed me for the better in a way I didn't fully understand until now. I miss you so much. I'm so sad and hurt. I have a hard time believing anything you say. I don't know how to trust your motives. You have so much to gain by staying with me and I have so much to lose by risking this all over again. I want to be able to trust you but you've kept so much hidden from me. I feel like I don't know you at all. My brain is going to so many dark places imagining the things you're still hiding. I trusted you, so I never checked your phone or social media. I trusted you, so I never checked your bank account or talked to Karen. We both had ample opportunities to deceive one another, but for the first time in my life I decided to be honest with a partner. I got burned because I took that risk. On a positive note, I feel like having the skill of not bailing when things get hard is now something I have in my arsenal. What I need to do now is spend more time reflecting on my pain and my loss. I can't stop crying or missing you and I don't know if those feelings are real, or just me being in shock. I woke up alone and immediately reached for you and looked to see if you were there. I'm used to you being already awake and on your phone. I wonder if you were always talking to Jen or another girl in those moments. I wonder if you have any other secrets. I wonder how much time of ours you gave away. So this is where I'm at. I'm trying to process my grief and anger. I'm trying to figure out if there's any possibility this could ever be a healthy relationship. I'm trying to remove my anxieties about the future from the equation and just figure out if I want to put myself at risk again. I don't regret loving you or marrying you or losing two children with you. I need to decide if I regret trusting you. I am hopeful that you're talking to a therapist. I can't promise that you doing the work now will be enough to make me have faith in you. As Carl's dad once said to me you need to advertise the product you're actually selling. When we met and got married, you sold me a guy who was long separated, emotionally past his marriage, honest, available, and capable of a real commitment. When shit got hard, you decided to stop being committed to me. Life gets hard, and I'm not interested in spending my life with someone who backs out of our marriage at any point, let alone in moments where we had real opportunities to get closer and grow. If you had come to me after the miscarriages, imagine how solid our bond could be. We'd both be stronger and better. Instead, I'm broken and the foundation my love for you was built on has been completely decimated. I have a lot of thinking to do. It's hard to cry alone and want someone to hold me. But the beauty of that is you're the first person I've ever wanted in the troll. I never felt like I could rely on Jerry or any other guy for support. You were the first. You were the only man I developed trust in. That'll always mean something to me. I'm better for having gone through this, even though I'm in more pain than I've ever experienced in all of my years. The love I have for you is very real. But so is this pain and hole in my heart. Sincerely. Your wife, Kate. I hate you. I miss you. Reflections. My husband proved to be emotionally damaged and dishonest from the day we met. I miss him so much. He told another woman he wanted to put a baby in her. He pretended our second miscarriage was no big deal even though I needed emergency surgery. I miss coming up with baby names. He was always texting. Sneaking calls. Never present at the dinner table or lay next to me in bed. I miss him holding me, telling me everything is going to be okay. Day after day we became strangers. He knew every single thing about me, the rape, the abuse, the history of being lied to, and still betrayed me. He told his girlfriend he loved her and they had forever. I miss hearing him say I love you. My heart is broken. I can't stop ugly crying. I can't believe this is happening. 
I never thought in a million years my big ginger rugby player would crush my heart and snuff out my light. He's the first man I trusted. I miss all of his lies. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.